I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. And all the roads we have to walk are winding, and all the lights that lead us there are blinding. Like to say to you, but I don't know how. But maybe you're gonna be the one that saves me. And after all, you're my. Happy Friday. Welcome back to Morning Coffee. You guys know the spiel heading into the weekend. Uh, figure out how to spend your time so that it actually enhances your growth uh, and you're not just trying to numb yourself from the fact that you're not growing in the way that you want to. You can do that for a while, but that is a pretty, that room is pretty limited. It's only going to work for a while. It's only a band aid. Eventually, you got to start facing the parts of yourself that perhaps you don't want to. And remember, a lot of life hides its meaning, its growth, uh, its experiences that are worth having between where you are now and the step that you're afraid to take. So my hope for you this weekend is that you begin to take those steps that maybe you're afraid to, but that you know hold the answer to a lot more life on the other side. Today what I wanted to do is follow up a little bit. I'm not sure if you listened to yesterday's episode with Mark Crandall, but in a very slight way we got into something, which is like, how do you accept yourself and your being while also understanding that you have to strive for more? And so what I wanted to do is see if I could untangle that a little bit for you and break that down because, man, this humanity thing, it's never straightforward. It's always confusing. It can get very messy. Uh, And it can be hard to conceptualize it always when these thoughts are bouncing around your head. And I've done a good amount of writing on this in my next book. So I just thought maybe I would uh, open up the idea of it. So first of all, the thing that I want you to understand is that you're not you like you think that you are. Man, and hopefully I can do this in under 10 minutes. But you're not you like you think that you are. Now, um, I will call it a soul, but some people will just call it an essence. Some people will just call it the you that's behind you, like the true self. doesn't really matter. I don't really care what your vernacular is, but a way of conceptualizing this is to think about the fact that um, you are in fact not your body. A good way that I heard Paul Chak explain it is if you were to hit your hand on a hammer, you would actually say, oh, I hurt, and someone said, what's wrong with you? You would say, oh, I hurt my hand. So hidden in our own language is the idea of possession, that we are in possession of this hand, but that this hand isn't us. Now you can think about that in every aspect of who you are, like your body is made of earth, it's made of matter, but that's not you. There's some, there's a you that's behind the thing. And just like you aren't your mind, right? So you have these thoughts, but like you also know your conscious mind would not make those same, wouldn't always give yourself those same thoughts, especially when it comes to negative thought patterns and limiting belief systems and things like that. What you have to understand is that the you that is behind the thing is worthy of everything that you would ever want. And that's why before you do, you just have to learn to be. You have to learn to accept what is. Now, hidden in this idea that there's a you behind the thing is the fact that the thing has been developed through millions of years of evolution. And that's the slant that I always take when I'm thinking about this. I think it's the most productive way to think about it. But either way, so you have a psychology that you have to overcome in a lot of ways. You're in possession of it, but it's got biological hardwiring. It's wired for survival. There's snares. There's an autonomic nervous system. All of these things, they happen as a result of the matter, but not the thing behind the matter, which is truly you. Now, the first step to being, I think, is to understand that the you that's behind the thing, you're dealing with all of these complexities that you're strapped with in your body in this meat wagon, but you also have to accept that they're not always you. Sometimes a thought comes into your consciousness and you just have to divide yourself from that thought because it's truly not you. 
And sometimes I think what happens is we conflate that with ourselves. We have these thoughts and we're like, God, I'm such an awful person for having these thoughts or having the capacity to act in that way. But in a lot of ways, you're just you're just trying to overcome your biology when it comes to showing up in the world how you actually want to. The last thing that I would say is like to think about yourself as not your body and not your physiology and not your psychology. The reason it's important to think about that is or a good way to conceptualize that is if you were to lose an appendage like a leg or something, you're not any less you. You have something new that you have to overcome and you have another way of navigating the world, but you're not any less you and you don't feel incomplete because you lost an appendage. That's because you aren't you like most people think that they are. There's a you that's behind the thing. Now, you have to accept that you are always just doing your best to overcome the limits that you've been placed in in this life. That's like whatever your cross to bear is, whatever your thing is, that's what you accept. Now, the paradox that you have to hold is that you have to learn to strive for something new while also understanding that you are worthy of that thing. And that's why you have to be before you can do. And as a selecting method, because one thing that happens is we begin to do things when we're motivated and then we wrap our identity up in those things just like we wrap our identity up in whatever this meat wagon is that we have. And you have to separate those because who you are, it's too damn amazing to be wrapped up in the identity of something that you do for a short period of time. Yet a lot of us do that. Now, the selecting mechanism that I've sort of come up with myself and my thoughts about this, because I've lost myself to my pursuits many, many times and to my relationships or and to my profession and to my hobbies. And so the way that you conceptualize it is, am I doing something that's going to enhance who I am? So a great way to think about that would be to travel, right? So I feel like when I travel, it helps me to see the world in different ways and to see things from other people's point of view and other people's culture. And that actually helps me to be more. But the key word there is that it enhances who I am and who I am isn't contingent on the thing that I do. And that is the paradox that we have to hold. It's like you have to understand that the moment right now is perfect, right? You're just you. Right now, you're just a human breathing, like I said uh, in yesterday's show. That's the reality of who you are right now. You're just you are just sitting here. You're a human breathing. But you also have to understand that this life is given to us and we have the ability to maximize it by doing things. And the only way that I think you can truly maximize it is that you understand that you are enough. Seems like a somewhat of a self-love concept is emerging this week. But also that all of life is about striving and bettering and doing more. And, you know, the way that I think about it is like I'm the thing behind the thing. But I have a responsibility and an obligation to take this opportunity, to take this body, whatever its limits are, whatever its capabilities are, whatever its greatness is, and then to maximize that opportunity to do the most good that I can with it. I have a different cross than you do. We all have different limitations that we have to overcome, but that's not a good enough reason not to overcome it. You can get really bogged down by the negativity in life and the things that aren't working out and the things that haven't worked out. Or I think you can take a very real look at who you are, understand that you are not the things you are overcoming. You are not angry. You are not sad. You are not any of these things. You just might be them right now or be going through them right now. But that life is going to reveal itself to you as you continue to strive and take the limitations that you've had and do the most you can with them. Our challenge in this lifetime is not, it's not to do better than somebody else as much as we, we tend to fall into the trap of thinking that. Our challenge is to take all that we've been given, good, bad, or indifferent, and to do the most good that we can with them. And truthfully, I don't see where we have a choice to do anything other than that. Do the best you can with what you've been given. Understand that you aren't your limitations. There's so much more to you. You are the person, you are the essence, you are the soul that's behind the thing. But you are not that. You're not what you're going through. You're not what your limitations are. You are what you allow yourself to be as you engage with the world. I hope this one makes sense. It's a really difficult uh, idea to untangle, but I think it helps to understand that matter isn't inherently self-organizing. And so if you think about everything on Earth, it's made of Earth, right? Like we are you know, a hundred trillion cells that's all collected, but we are all made of earth. Like our bones, we're water, we're air. We are everything on this planet, the houses we build, it all comes from this planet. But matter itself isn't inherently self-organizing. 
you know? And so um, the other way that I heard this explained that I thought was brilliant by Paul Check is he said, if you just dump a Monopoly game out on a table, you have to set it up. You have to organize the matter so that it makes sense. You're doing the same thing with the body that you have and the life that you've been given. You are the thing behind the thing. You have the ability to organize this, this life and this thing in the best possible way. And I think that we all really have a responsibility to do so. So again, untangling the idea of a soul and a true self and you, it's all very complicated things, but hopefully this sheds a little light on it. Hopefully allows you to just understand a little better the opportunity that you have now and that you aren't the bullshit that you've been strapped with throughout your entire life. You're not even the narrative in your head. You're the thing behind the thing. And you have the opportunity to take the off ramp from negative narratives and cycles and things that you find yourself in whenever you want, but you have to allow yourself to do it and you have to have a real good perspective on what's really going on with you. Have a great weekend. I love y'all. I'll talk to you Monday on Morning Coffee. I've got to go downtown. I miss you along the way. I miss your stripes, your lily whites that have turned dirty gray. I've got to pay that bus. I've got to make that fair. I miss the kiss in your crooked teeth. Miss your pixie hair. Cause I hate to see you suffering. Don't ever want your prison blue eyes to be sad now once. I know it's not how it goes, but this worrying was on the Oh